there. My name is Frances. I'm going to be leading you through a short 15 minute yoga class today. So I'm going to be starting my mountain pose. Right at the top of the mat, starting with my Ujjayi breath. I'm going to go through one sun A for you. I know I've taught sun A and sun B, so check the UNLV uh, YouTube page. I think I have a whole class where it's just sun A, sun B, sun C. Always do those before if you have time because they're a nice all around body stretch workout for the body. So starting in mountain pose. Big toes are touching, heels slightly apart, or if that's not good on your hips, you know how you feel. Maybe you have a hip distance. So inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, hands back. Step back to high plank, to low, or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. So we're going to inhale, foot leg's going to come up to the ceiling, exhale, right foot steps as far forward as you can. We're going to adjust our left foot to a 45 degree angle. So find this nice foundation, just like in any other topic or subject, the foundation is where all strength is built. And rise up to warrior one. So your hips are aimed toward the front. They might not actually be square. After all, your left foot isn't pointed forward, so it'd be a little weird if they were. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. They are in line, heels slightly in line. If you need to move your right foot a little far out to keep your balance, that's fine. Hands are in the Ashtanga practice. Your palms are touching. Your right straight up, but if your shoulders don't like that, keep them hip, keep them shoulder distance, pinkies wrapped in them. Now we're just going to exhale, frame your right foot, inhale, rise back up into your warrior one. Exhale down, inhale up, exhale down, inhale up. Exhale down, inhale up, exhale down, inhale up. So that's a nice practice for moving up from your chaturanga into your warrior one. Now a lot of times you'll see some people, their knee, their leg position will change. So you want to try and keep your legs firm wherever they are. Maybe one day you're further out, maybe one day you're in. That's the where you are that day. Don't worry about it. Your body will tell you where you should be and that's the best way to avoid injury. <laughs> so exhale down, inhale up. So now we're gonna turn our left foot to be parallel with the back of our mat, warrior two. So now your feet are perfect right here, but if you wanna go for the ideal warrior two, you would stretch it you would step your right foot because or step your right foot forward or your left foot back a little it is a little further ideally your right thigh should be parallel with the floor beneath it sometimes you're not really feeling that i don't blame you and your hips are now going to adjust to face the side of your mat <laughs> hands are out to the sides now your fingers are all touching they're all active making them like a dagger. <laughs> Reaching equal length forward and back. Now, make sure your shoulders aren't touching your ears. So sometimes some teachers like to tell you, turn your palms face up so you lower your shoulders and then hands down again. Now a little warm, little exercise for this. Straighten your right leg. Arms go up, exhale, down into your warrior two. Inhale up, exhale down, inhale up, exhale down, inhale up, exhale down, one more. 
Inhale up. Exhale down. Warrior two. So our next pose is going to be called reverse warrior. So your left hand's either going to come onto your left thigh or you're going to have it go around the low back and try to grab the top of your right thigh. And your right hand is now going to go up, up a lot, and a little bit back. And then after a few breaths, you should feel a nice side stretch all along the right side body here. Right back into your warrior two. We're now gonna shift into extended side angle. It's a really common pose after a warrior two pose in a warrior flow. So the most basic version, right forearm is gonna to come to the left, to the right thigh. The left hand is gonna go up and away making a straight line from the left fingertips all the way down to your left heel. <coughs> so it's important you're finding length in the left side. I know a lot of people think the further forward you reach, the better ramp you're gonna get, but look, that's not a ramp anymore, is it? So go up. If you wanna make sure we focus on alignment, don't sacrifice any alignment just for the sake of going deeper into the pose. The next, <laughs> the deep, the full expression of this pose, your right hand would be on the inside of your right foot, and you'd still be reaching up. Now, you see, I'm a little tight today, so my ramp isn't quite as long if I do that. <laughs> so, when your right hand's on the floor, you're pressing your right arm into your right knee, at the same time, your right leg is pressing into your right arm, activating both. You can also place your right hand on the outside of your right leg and press it in that way. Though another common variation, if you want a more fitness-oriented yoga, have both arms up like you're holding a ball between your hands. This really starts to activate the core, starts to put a little more focus, a little more tension into your leg. Now, if you've been in some of my classes and some others, you'll know we often cue for binds, half binds, or bird of paradise. A half bind, left arm around low back. Full bind, the right hand goes under the right leg and around the back to interlace the fingers. That's a full bind in your extended side angle. Slowly come up to warrior two. And now if you have plenty of time, you would vinyasa down. So windmill the hands down, frame the right foot, step it back, high to low, up dog, down dog. Inhale up and step your left foot forward. If you're a little pressed for time, you can straighten both legs, point both toes toward the left side of your mat. Take a moment here always nice to add in a forward fold great for the low back so hands are extended use this as a cue to keep your whole back flat once you feel a hunch in your back hands come down to the mat or the floor beneath you and fold forward keeping the legs straight try to walk the heels of your hands in line with the heels of your feet you're trying to get the crown of your head onto the mat beneath you now, if your head's already touching the mat, try shortening your stance a little. It'll make it a little harder for yourself. If your head is miles away, try lengthening the stance. It'll help it a little bit. So you're gonna count to five deep breaths in and out. Your hands are gonna come to your hips and you're gonna come straight back upright. <laughs> From here. Now, this was the shorter version. Like I said, you didn't do a vinyasa. So your hands are going to go out to a T again. You're going to turn your left toes now toward the back of your mat. Adjust your right foot to a 45 degree angle. Bend into that left knee and find your warrior one on this side. 
Now you're gonna do the same thing on the left side that you did on the right. So you're gonna do five, exhale, inhale, Once you've done your five, open up into your warrior two. Turn that right foot now to be parallel with the front of your mat, former front of your mat. <laughs> You're gonna do your warrior two. You're gonna go into your first warrior. Then you're gonna go to your extended side angle. Now, if you feel like arm on the thigh is not quite enough, but you feel like you're losing the stance when you reach for the floor, Find anything you can use, a hydro flask, some books, a hand weight, place it right next to your foot and use it as a prop. There's nothing wrong with using props. It's not a disability, it's not a handicap. Literally all it does is bring the earth closer to your hand as a way so you can find the full expression of your pose today. And honestly, it takes a lot more strength and courage to admit to use a prop than to do it without a prop and then hurt yourself. That's just silly. <laughs> so after you've done that, back up into your warrior two from your extended side angle, straighten that left leg, Hands to your hips. Turn all 10 toes toward the front, toward the side of your mat. Inhale, find length again. Now this time, interlace your fingers behind your back, but don't let your fingers rest on your back. Make sure there's some space there. And find your forward fold once more. You'll find your hands going up over your head Ideally, the crown of the head is touching the floor and the hands are right in front of it. Now I keep saying crown of the head. It's important to note, to find the crown of the head, a lot of people tend to be on their forehead, honestly, or a little too far back. A nice, easy way to find a nice estimate of where your crown of the head is. Heel of the hand, right at the brow. Roll your fingers up where your middle finger ends. That's the crown of your head. And you've held that pose for a little bit. So let go of your hands, hands to your hips. Come all the way back upright. Look toward the front of your mat. Step your left foot up to meet it. Find your mountain pose. We're going to inhale, hands rise up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, hands plant, step back, high plank. Slowly lower your knees down to the mat. And now you're just going to sit down, put your legs in front of you. Find yourself in a nice crisscross position. Easy seated pose. So get a nice tall spine. You're slowly going to bring your right hand to your left knee. Left hand right behind your hip. Inhale, find length. Exhale, twist. With each breath in, get your head a little higher, spine a little taller. For each exhale, twist just a little bit more. After five breaths, slowly turn to the side. Hold a little bit so you can reset your spine after that twist. Now left hand to the right knee. Right hand right behind the hip. Inhale, find length. Exhale, twist. Do this for five breaths. <laughs> Slowly fold toward the left side to reset for left twist. And then find your easy seated position. If this is comfortable for you, maybe you extend your legs straight maybe you lay down on your back to find your savasana your final pose of this little go through it just takes a nice easy breath 
feeling, whatever you're feeling, letting the work you've done sink in. So if you're ending your practice with me now, hands come together at heart center. And we end our practice by saying namaste and bowing our heads. Once more, my name is Francis, and it was a pleasure to be able to lead you through class. I hope you enjoyed it.